A very good evening to everyone. Welcome to Global Online. And here we are back with our NTA UGC net preparation for paper one. That is for your June 2024 cycle. And the unit which we are doing right now is higher education system. In this particular session, we are going to see previous year's most important questions in the form of PYQs also, you can say, most repeated topics also, you can say. So make sure that all these questions are properly understood, uh, studied well, and uh, definitely you are going ahead with your preparation for paper one. So before we move ahead, an important announcement from 18th of March 2024, we will be starting a new sessions on live on app that is global online app. How to access this sessions, how to refer to the sessions, we'll be all seeing this very shortly at the end of the video. So make sure that you are staying tuned, learning the questions very well, understanding them very well. And at the end of the session, if you definitely are new to the channel, you can subscribe and wait for us to tell you how to join the session or how to join these global online app and to clear your examination for June 2024. So before that, let's start with the questions for the day. So here are the first question. In the context of higher education, National Education Policy 2020 has emphasized the need for what? Discipline, specific regulators, pre-education, fragmentation, internationalization. Now see, National Education Policy 2020, we have already done this in detail session. We are doing MCQs and every session of MCQ, we have definitely National Education Policy 2020. So make sure this topic is very well revised and don't worry, I'll be coming up with a, a specific video for this topic. So let's still understand that National education policy in context to higher education has came up with what? A disciplined specific regulator or a free education or fragmentation or internationalization. So there is a specific feature of new education policy with reference to making India as, you know, a place for a premium global education. And that is possible only by emphasizing the need for what? By emphasizing the need for internationalization. That is uh, making sure that the global education is, uh, uh, it's premiumly seen. And definitely a lot of efforts have been made in national education policy 2020 in order to get these premium global education at India, right? Coming to question number two, which of the following are the major characteristics of good governance? Now, see here, governance, it means, you know, basically the one who, the government, okay, right? The policy with reference to here, it talks about higher education system of the country. So, if it's reference to higher education system, what is the good governance are we following? It is conscious oriented, it is accountable, it is opaque, it is inclusive, it is aut autocratic. So now if you see, like for example, it talks about education, right? We have also done teaching aptitude very well. And in teaching aptitude, we studied very well, but which type of education is must. It is, you know, it is definitely needs to be there. So out of all those points, accountability, opaque, autocratic, inclusive, conscious oriented one point which is which should be definitely there so let's see what is that point if you remember teaching aptitude if you try to recall we have learned in teaching aptitude very well that education should be inclusive teacher should impart an inclusive education so option number d so wherever you see option number d is definitely should be there so by default you eliminate option number three and four but now uh, let's see now there are two options where d is given So now it is a time for you to think, okay, the first option says it's conscious oriented, accountable, opaque and uh, inclusive, sorry, if you see A, B, D, so conscious, accountable and inclusive. Second option says it is conscious oriented and uh, inclusive. So accountable, opaque and autocratic. So already these are out from the list and if you know opaque, it means which is not transparent. In fact, uh, education should have transparency. Autocratic, it talks about what? It talks about uh, the power. But education does not, or good governance does not talks about power. So that is also out. So accountability, yes, you should be responsible for what you're delivering. And hence, the right option will be option number A. That is, it is conscious oriented, it is op accountable and it is inclusive. 
So if you see accountability, transparency, responsiveness, equitable, inclusive, effective, efficient, follow the rule of law, participatory and conscious oriented. These are the good characteristics of what any good governance, right? Okay. Coming to the next question. Yes, if you remember, in the life class, we have studied about major modern, you know, reformations or changes with respect to um, education in post-independence period. And where we studied Kotari education. So what are the recommendations? This is what, sorry, this is what I was talking about. I'm extremely sorry. I'm talking about what type of recommendations the commissions will come up with. So whenever I, in fact, I have given you some notes and I will be also giving you the notes wherein I have made very clear what type of commissions are there, what are the committees, what is expected. So some recommendations of the Kothari commissions are whether it is establishment of cluster in major universities, whether it is abolition of, you know, affiliated college, whether it is abolition of evaluation system, establishment of major universities or improving the quality and content of lecturing. So now if you see, there is one topic, okay. Uh, see, in every answer, no, you will get one point which is not related to the topic at all. It's odd man out. So here, before I telling you, you can also um, sense Continuous evaluation system is something which is definitely not be not will be abolition of this will not be recommended by anyone. So wherever you get option C, you have to just cancel it out. This is also where you can get the answer, but still, okay, it's it's clearly striked out. So you know that okay, option number A, it's centers of major universities, right? Establishment of major universities, okay. And equality and content improvement, yes. So, if you see automatically answer number A, oh, sorry, answer number 4, that is A, D and E is a right answer. See, these are the some, uh, you know, simplest tricks in order to avoid your, uh, to, you know, confusion, uh, save your time and then accordingly practice it very well, right? Now, coming to the next question, during the Vedic period. So, here it talks about ancient education system in India. The higher level of education was what? Professional curriculum, uh, sorry, professional curriculum, general one, specialized one or technical one. So when you look at Vedic period, okay, that is coming under what? Ancient education system of India, which was the higher level. Was it professional? Was it general? Was it specialized? Was it technical? Maybe. You do not, you have not studied a... Uh, It can happen so that you have not studied Vedic uh, period, but you know modern, uh, you know, post-independence period. So if you see all the points, some points are definitely indicating that these are the points or curriculum which came in modern. So if you look at them very clearly, it was only specialized system or curriculum, which was, you know, during the Vedic period of higher education system, level of education, right? Now, coming to the next question, which of the following is not? Please see the year very clearly. A criteria for the quality assessment of NAC. Teaching, learning, evaluation, consultancy, infrastructure, recruitment of teaching professionals, uh, leadership and governance. Now they are saying you very clearly not a quality assessment. So it talks about what? The point uh, under the assessment criteria of NAC is not, you know, is not a part of it. Whether it is teaching, learning, evaluation, whether it is consultancy, whether it is infrastructure, whether it is recruitment or whether it is governance. So it does, you know, it comes under what? It comes under not. So from the above, which will definitely you feel is not a part of, you know, NAC assessment. Now see, very well, the question on, you know, uh, accreditation, Council is very regular. In, it's, it's not only in this cycle, many cycles you can see. So you should know the criteria at least of NAC and which of them does not fall under the quality assessment. It's very clear. We have never studied something called recruitment of teaching professionals. We have never, we have studied seven criteria of NAC, but this is something which we have not, you know, came across under NAC. So that is recruitment of teaching professionals, right? Okay. Coming to next question, NCTE is established in the year 1995, is what? Now see, 
Now, this is again a new type of question coming. I told you, many a times they give you the acronym, they tell you to identify the full form. Many a times they give you the full form also and they tell you to identify the year of establishment. But here, they have given the full form, uh, sorry, they have given the acronym, that is National T Council for Teacher Education, which it was established in 1995. But they are now asking you it's which type of body. Is it a professional teachers association, a private association or a statutory body? So you need to identify that which type of body it is. So looking at all the options, obviously, and understanding National Council for Teachers Education, it is something which is identified as what? It is identified as a statutory body, okay? Body which comes under the legal act, right? Coming to the next question, we have two statements, statement number one and statement number two. Now, statement one talks about deemed universities can frame their own guidelines regarding admissions and fees and grant degrees. And statement two says that the government of the state is a chancellor of the deemed university. So, deemed universities, private universities, state universities, central universities, again, on these topics, one question is there. Sometimes, you know, they ask you to recognize the deemed university, sorry, to recognize the state universities, to recognize the private universities. So, you have, you know, different set of questions. So, you should be uh, making sure that you know these very well because these are, again, the part of the questions. So, deemed university can make their own guidelines regarding admission, regarding fees and degrees. Statement 2 says that the government of the state is the vice chancellor, sorry, is the chancellor of the deemed universities. So, looking yet, yes, looking at both the statements, definitely statement number 1 is true, deemed universities can do this all, whereas statement 2 stands to be false, okay. So, statement 1 is true true and uh, sorry one is true and two stands to be false that the governor is not the of the state is not the chancellor of the university deem university right coming to question number eight the first digital university of india has been established in kerala so kerala you know the first digital university is the uh, one which has been established in kerala and india's first defense university is situated in the state of haryana now see uh, this question was very common in old exam, old uh, type of syllabus, but they have repeated it and they have put it under the statement. So you should know that whether what you know what type of statement it is, whether true or false. So coming towards the statements, yes, statement one that is the digital university has been established in Kerala, very true, and the first India's defense university is situated in the state of Haryana, where that is also correct, right? Now. Talking about question number 9, which of the following were the outcomes of the introduction of English system of higher education system? Outcomes. So, when we, you know, decided to introduce English as the English system of higher education, what was the result of it? With the status quo in the education system, regulation of women's education to the lowest level, rise of social consciousness, emphasizes on the material prosperity or acquaintance with the western culture and scientific knowledge so when we look at the outcomes the results of introduction of english system of higher education system what do you feel what are the following points so it talks about what what points so looking at all the you know the education's uh, introduction of english system of a higher education we come to know that yes a rise of social consciousness is important Material prosperity is, yes, the one of the outcome and acquaintance of Western literature. A status quo and definitely regulation of women is not something which is a part of what? Which is a part of your higher education system with reference to India. Okay. Coming to the next question, the famous grammar, gra, sorry, grammarian Panini had his education at what? Takshila, Pataliputra, Nalanda or uh, Shudayan? So, what is the, uh, sorry, where is the famous uh, grammarian Panini uh, had his education from? Yes, again, this is 2023 question only. So, make sure that this question is definitely, you know, it's a part of your, uh, I mean to say, examination. So, this is something, you know, which is very common. Out of five questions, this one question comes. But it's okay. Maybe, you know, it is sometimes, it is 
it's not possible that you have not read it or something it's okay but at least you should make an attempt that four questions which you are very attempting clearly are should be very clear with the a uh, topic so the famous grammarian panini had his education from none other than takshila okay is it clear right okay coming so coming to the end of this video as i told you i'll be telling how to join the session okay so what you can do is with the help of google play store download the global online app register yourself with the registered mobile number go to the course once you opt for the course okay you will be getting an access for everything which comes under the content part in case if you are willing to see only the demo sessions you know uh, for a while you can again uh, talk to our team get in touch with them the whatsapp numbers are given on the screen uh, get it sorted out and then decide you know what whether you can go for uh, these or not okay and that's how you at least in order to prepare yourself best for your coming examination you can definitely take a look enroll and start preparing for your examination yeah that's all thank you everyone uh, see you in the next class